humanity William Wordsworth what though the accused, upon his own appeal to righteous gods when man has ceased to feel, or at a doubting judge's stern command, before the stone of power no longer stand to take his sentence from the balanced block, as, at his touch, it rocks, or seems to rock. Though, in the depths of sunless groves, no more the druid priest the hallowed oak adore. Yet, for the initiate, rocks and whispering trees do still perform mysterious offices. And functions dwell in beast and bird that sway the reasoning mind, or with the fancy play, inviting, at all seasons, ears and eyes to watch for undelusive auguries, not uninspired appear their simplest ways. Their voices mount symbolical of praise to mix with hymns that spirits make and hear. And to fallen man their innocence is dear. Enraptured art draws from those sacred spring streams that reflect the poetry of things. Where Christian martyrs stand in hues portrayed, that, might a wish avail, would never fade. Born in their hands the lily and the palm shed round the altar a celestial calm. There, too, behold the lamb and guileless dove press in the tenderness of virgin love to saintly bosoms. Glorious is the blending of right affections climbing or descending along a scale of light and life with cares alternate, carrying holy thoughts and prayers up to the sovereign seat of the Most High, descending to the worm and charity, like those good angels whom a dream of night gave, in the field of Luz, to Jacob's sight all, while he slept, treading the pendant stairs earthward or heavenward, radiant messengers, that, with the perfect will and one accord of strict obedience, serve the Almighty Lord, and with untired humility forbear to speed their errand by the wings they wore. What a fair world were ours for verse to paint, if power could live at ease with self-restraint. Opinion bow before the naked sense of the great vision, faith and providence. Merciful over all his creatures, just to the least particle of sentient dust, but, fixing by immutable decrees, see time and harvest for his purposes. Then would be closed the restless oblique eye that looks for evil like a treacherous spy. Disputes would then relax like stormy winds that into breezes sink. Impetuous minds by discipline endeavor to grow meek as truth herself, whom they profess to seek. Then genius, shunning fellowship with pride, would braid his golden locks at wisdom's side. Love ebb and flow untroubled by caprice. And not alone, harsh tyranny would cease, but unoffending creatures find release from qualified oppression, whose defense rests on a hollow plea of recompense. Thought-tempered wrongs, for each humane respect off worse to bear, or deadlier in effect. Witness those glances of indignant scorn from some high-minded slave, impelled to spurn the kindness that would make him less forlorn. Or, if the soul to bondage be subdued, his look of pitiable gratitude. Alas for the bright galaxy of isles, whose day departs in pomp, returns with smiles to greet the flowers and fruitage of the land, as the sun mounts, by sea born breezes fanned, a land whose azure mountain tops are seats for gods in council, whose green vales, retreats fit for the shades of heroes, mingling there to breathe the Lygian peace in upper air. Though cold as winter, gloomy as the grave, stone walls a prisoner make, but not a slave. Shall man assume a property in man? Lay on the morrow will a withering ban? Shame that our laws at distance still protect enormities, which they at home reject. Am person quo. Slaves cannot breathe in England and quo. Yet that boast is but a mockery. When from coast to coast, though fettered slave be none, her floors and soil groan underneath the weight of slavish toil, for the poor many, measured out by rules fetched with cupidity from heartless schools, that to an idol, falsely called and quo. The wealth of nations, and person quo. Sacrifice a people's health, body and mind and soul. A thirst so keen as ever urging on the vast machine of sleepless labor, mid whose dizzy wheels the power least prized is that which thinks and feels. Then, for the pastimes of this delicate age, and all the heavy or light the salage which for their sakes we fasten, as may suit our varying moods, on humankind or brute, tore well and little, as in great, to pause, lest fancy trifle with eternal laws. Not from his fellows only man may learn rights to compare and duties to discern. All creatures and all objects, in degree, are friends and patrons of humanity. There are to whom the garden, grove, and field, perpetual lessons of forbearance yield. 
who would not lightly violate the grace the lowliest flower possesses in its place, nor shorten the sweet life, too fugitive, which nothing less than infinite power could give.